Amen. 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 I was in a service. My goodness. It was it was a long time ago. <laughs> it, it was it was probably it was probably 40 years ago. And a great woman of God, everybody called her Graham Roberts. She was uh, a special lady, and she, she used to flow with the Spirit, and be moved on by the Spirit of God from time to time. And the anointing came on her in the service, and it was in the after service. And, and I, I was playing an instrument, was in the Pentecostal church in Twillingate. And everybody stopped and, and because all of a sudden she began to speak in tongues. And then she began to interpret what she was saying. And she was walking back and forth. And the interpretation of the tongues was, what I say unto one, I say unto all. And this is what she was doing. Watch. What I say unto one, I say unto all. Watch. What I say unto one, I say unto all. Watch. I've never forgotten that. Never forgotten that. Well, I was sitting there this morning. I was thinking about the uh, few minutes I'm going to talk to you. And uh, we're, we're continuing with, do you want to be blessed? Or how to be blessed? Because the scriptures are the best source of information about that. And I, I've already alluded to it a couple of times in the last few weeks. I said, I'm going to be talking about watching. And the Bible explicitly says that uh, blessed are they who watch. Blessed are they who watch. Now, if, you, if you've taken any time to look at that word in the New Testament, uh, one of the Greek words that's used for watch in quite a few of the th places that I looked in, it talks about staying awake, to keep awake, or to be awake, or to be vigilant, watchful on all sides. And Jesus said, he said, blessed are those servants whom the Lord finds watching when he comes. And in Mark 13, 37, this is where the Holy Spirit picked out these words for Graham Roberts at that particular time. Mark 13, 37, he said, And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. It seems to me that the word for us right now this morning and, and nobody's left out because all kind of covers all. Don't you think? Amen. Everybody say, that means me. So the exhortation and the command, if you would, for us today is to watch. And I want to take a little bit of time and talk about what I believe that entails. In Mark chapter 14, I just want to start with this scripture. Verse 38. Jesus again is saying, Watch ye and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The Spirit truly is ready or willing whichever translation you want to take in or scripture. But the flesh is weak. Now what that is saying is that if you don't watch, the flesh could cause you to lose the battle. And Jesus himself, I mean, come on, who else can you put confidence in more than Jesus? Here's God wrapped himself in flesh. On Christmas, the first Christmas day. And was placed in a little manger. He humbled himself 
to that degree so that he could bring help and deliverance and, and life to you and I. So who else can you expect to get truth from and to get help from and wisdom from if not the Lord Jesus Christ? And he said, he said, watch. Be alert. Be vigilant. Be watchful on all sides. Stay awake. Because you otherwise may fall when you're tempted. And he didn't stop there. He said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I mentioned it last week, or was it Thursday night or Wednesday night prayer meeting? I don't know when it was for sure. It really is not important when, but I remember saying it recently, that prayer is not, it was last Sunday night. Prayer is not a flesh thing. Your flesh is not going to be screaming at you. Come on, let's go pray. Let's go pray. Let's go pray. Trust me. It ain't going to work that way. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak, being led by natural things and circumstances. And the flesh will lead you away from the word of God, away from the will of God, away from the plan of God, and away from the presence of God. The flesh does not naturally tend to go towards God's will or God's plan for your life. That's why you and I have to intentionally, purposefully watch. Be careful. Be alert. Stay awake. We should watch so the flesh does not win. Because there's not one person here, I don't care who you are. You can be as super spiritual as you want, but I'm going to guarantee you right now, you're going to be in a battle with your flesh. Paul the Apostle, who wrote half the New Testament pretty much, he, he said, the flesh and the spirit are contrary one to the other. And you cannot do just what you want. Isn't that the truth? You read it in the fifth chapter of the book of Galatians. So, it doesn't matter who we are this morning. The exhortation, the prophetic word, the challenge is watch. And if... <laughs> If back in Jesus' day when there were no cell phones, no iPads, no computers, no airplanes, no cars, everything was like snail speed, if you had to watch then, can you imagine? How much more urgent it is to heed that, 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 that challenge today. Watch. Because distraction today, technically distraction is the order of the day today. People are being distracted when they're driving. Actually, they're pretty much equating uh, a distraction with cell phones now. Uh, close to drunk driving. That's one area where we can make our minds up to watch. Amen? You see, it's too late after you've killed somebody to start watching. It's too late after you've missed it to start watching. It's too late after you've lost a whole bunch of things that you didn't want to lose to start watching. The time to watch is now. They say, well, when I get your age, I'll watch. That's the dumbest thing you ever thought. I like Romans 13 and 11. Paul said, knowing the time. <laughs> now, can I please understand me. I know this is a few years after Jesus died, but they still didn't have, and I won't go through the list again. All right? It's Paul now. He said, knowing the time, it is high time to awake 
out of sleep. In other words, watch. The scriptures say, watchmen, what of the night? Are you going to be overtaken by the enemy? Are you going to be snatched away in a time when you should have been watching? Taken captive at the enemy's will. Ephesians 5.14 Awake thou that sleepeth, Paul said. And Christ will give you light. You know, if you, if you don't walk in the, in the Spirit, if you don't listen to the Word, and if you don't listen to the leading of the Holy Spirit, if, if you just put that aside and make it a, a very, like, non-issue in your life, you are actually walking like a blind person. Spiritually. You stumble along, and, 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 and you, you trip over anything at all, Because you are spiritually blind if you are not giving the word the attention it needs. Giving the Holy Spirit the attention he needs. And obeying God daily like we've talked about in some of these these things we've been working on. So awake thou that sleepeth. And, And Christ will give you light. Um. I don't know if you've if you've noticed or not, but in the book of Revelations, there is, there is a great challenge to, uh, to watch. In the third chapter of, uh, of Revelations, if, if, you, if you, is anybody doing scripture in there? You want to you wanna put up Revelation chapter 3, verse 3? What a, what, a, what a challenge. If you don't watch, Revelation 3, 3. He said, if you don't watch, remember therefore how you have received. Did you receive anything from God? Has God been faithful to bring you out of darkness, into light, out of bondage, into liberty? Out of the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of his dear son? That's enough to receive. Remember therefore how you've received and heard. You've heard the truth. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, if you will not watch. I will come unto you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. Now, I don't, I, you, you can listen to all the TV evangelists you want to. I don't care. You've got the internet. You've got TV. You've got radio. You can listen to anybody you want. I really, I'm not, I, I don't bother me. I listen to them too. But please, don't let anything that comes from anybody Dismiss what the Lord Jesus Christ himself says. And this is Jesus speaking here. And he says, if you refuse to watch. In other words, stay awake spiritually. Be vigilant. Spirit. Watch out for things. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute, what it really means. But if, if we refuse to do that. In other words, if you just get careless, nonchalant, it doesn't really mean anything. And that's the kind of message that's being propagated in some areas today. It really don't matter. You don't have to think about anything at all. God will take care of it all, and you don't have to do anything. That's not what Jesus is saying. He said, if you refuse to watch, you won't even know when I'm coming. You won't even be aware of the time it happens. I don't want to be there. Anybody else here agree with me this morning? Don't want to be there. Don't want to be in that category. Not interested. Not interested at all. So I I plan to watch. I plan to watch. You see, he's coming back again. I mentioned last Sunday, he came as a baby, and then he's coming now as a king. He's coming to rule and reign forever. And he said, when I come back, I want to find some people watching. Isn't that what he said? Hallelujah. Well, what do, you, what do you need to be watching for? What do you need to be watching out for? I mean, Paul said, knowing the time, and I don't want to spend time on this, but knowing the time is... <laughs> is a strong statement to make 
like nearly 2,000 years ago, he said that. Uh, bring it to today, and I can say it today, and it should hold a lot more punch. Knowing the time, it is high time to wake out of sleep. In other words, wake up and watch. Wake up and be alert. What should you watch? Because there are a lot of things in life you can lose. A lot of things in li life that you can, you can miss out on. You need, like, one of the things, and uh, Matthew even alluded to this earlier, you know, talking about uh, different things, and you can, you can miss out on the blessing of God by not watching your words. I could spend an hour talking about that, but I'm not going to go there. That's not what I want to do this morning. I do want to remind you of all the things you've heard about, the preaching and teaching you've heard about watching your words, saying the right thing. And not saying the wrong thing. It doesn't mean that, you know, if you say one thing wrong one time, it's going to kill you or it's going to take everything you own. But if you set a precedent in a particular area and you walk in that way, eventually it's going to overwhelm you and your life will go the way your tongue is going. You start talking slack and careless and you get slack and careless. You start talking dirty talk, you will become a dirty person. You start, you start talking, you know, angry, and you will turn into an angry person. It won't happen overnight, but it, you gravitate to what your tongue says. So watch your mouth. Everybody say, I'm going to watch my mouth. You need, you, need to, you need to watch your finances. Matthew had no idea this was in my message this morning, but it's here. You need to watch your finances. Like, I could spend some time on this and talk about how God has helped and how I refuse to go, to go ahead in my life without, without recognizing that he is my source. We need, we need to, we need, remember Hebrews 11 and 6, when you come to God, you must believe that he is. I believe when it comes to finances, a lot of people don't know God is. They, they're not sure that God is. They'd like to believe he is until, until it gets to the place where you've got to let go of your tithe. They, 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 they want to believe that God is until you, the Holy Ghost puts a thought in your heart and your mind to give a seed or sow some money. And, and well, no, I, that's not God. <laughs> I rebuke you, you lying devil. Get your hands off my finances. God is wanting us to prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. And he's going to lead us in ways that will bring us to total and complete victory. You need to watch your giving. You need to make sure the devil doesn't talk you out of stuff that's going to bring the blessing of God on you. And, and you need to watch your spending. A lot of times you're spending money on things that are not. Junk. And wonder why you got no money. Why you got no seed. Because you didn't watch. The onslaught of demand for you to spend your money on stuff that means nothing. You need to watch your financial planning. You need to plan where you're going to be down the road six months or a year from now. Don't just say, well, you know, who cares? We'll just spend it. We'll just buy this, buy that. Because, you know, hey, you know, take care of it later. Watch. Watch. You, you and I need to be wise in these areas. And, and if we can ever get to the place where we, where we recognize glory to God, if you could recognize God in your giving so that you, when you take $20 out and put in and sow it into the kingdom of God, you're doing that. You know, I'm just picking $20 as an hypothetical figure. But you're doing that. It has to be something that you acknowledge before God. Watch what you're doing. Don't let it get be nonchalant. You just, you know. Don't let your tithing become, become like just a run-of-the-mill thing and you don't even recognize that you are actually walking in obedience to the word of God. Not the law. Tithing is not the law. I haven't got time to preach this this morning, but we will sometime as the Lord leads. But tithing came in 420 years before the law. When Abraham met Melchizedek 
on the road after the big slaughter of the enemy and all the spoil that he was bringing back. The Bible says he gave him tithes of all. Hmm. Now, watch these areas because it's easy for the flesh to win. Remember Jesus said, Watch and pray that you fall not into temptation because the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The spirit will want you to obey God and do the word of God, but your flesh is going to scream at you and say, you're crazy. You're crazy. Now, I want to say one thing before I move on, because I don't want to spend a lot of time in this area, but seeing that the Lord has already accented this thing this morning, I don't want to miss anything either. I was thinking while Matthew was, was preaching there for a bit. Uh... <laughs> That was a powerful word. But I have seen God do astronomical things for me in the last 40 years that we've been, we've been serving him and, and walking in agreement together in our finances. And we never fear, even though sometimes the potential for that fear is there. But what I've noticed is this, and this will help you if you listen to me. We have gone sometimes for a protracted period of time when I've thought, God, uh, this is our address. I can give you my postal code if you want. And, and, and I got two phone numbers if you want to get a hold of me. I'm sure that you gave, you know, uh, Michael or Gabriel the wrong number or street address. <laughs> now, I don't say that, but I mean, you can feel like doing that because, because sometimes your faith will be tested and the, the thing is, what are you saying and, and what are you doing in, 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 in the interim between the, the, the blessing you got back there and, and by the time this one that you're believing for gets to you? I remember believing God for some money one time. I won't go into details. But, you know, I was saying, God, I need this much money. And after a year or so <laughs> believing, the devil... Spoke to me one day. I know it was the devil. He said, you might as well give that up. You might as well quit that. That's never going to happen. And he, you know, I mean, he was credible. Sounded credible. After all, it had been a year or so. I recognized who he was. I said, devil, just for that, I'm going to double it. So I started thanking God regularly for double what I had asked. About a year afterwards, the double came with interest. Now, if, if, if I had quit and thought, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know if this is going to work. If I had done that, I don't believe it would have ever shown up. What do you believe? Why? Are you watching your mouth when it comes to your finances? Are you watching your actions when it comes to your finances? Are you watching your, 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 your spiritual status? Because that's where I want to go from here. You, you need to watch your spiritual status. Check up on yourself. I mean, Facebook is not enough. <laughs> Having a great day today. Just use the bathroom. I had a rough time to. <laughs> oh, if you're watching on the internet, I'm not nearly as bad as this most of the time. Sometimes worse, though. I mean, Facebook is not enough for you to say, you know, bless the Lord. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let's rejoice. Anybody can write that down. What did you say to your husband or your wife when you got out of bed this morning? What kind of attitude did you have when somebody crossed you today? That's what I want to find out in Facebook. You don't get that. You know what I'm saying? We need to have, watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Watch your attitude. 
Because if you don't watch your attitude, you will not be able to, to find what your real spiritual status is. Where are you standing? Are you as strong in God now as you were 10 years ago? Are you as determined to follow Him? Are you as determined to seek Him? Are you as determined to have His, His love and His joy and His peace and His righteousness in your life as you were 10, 15 years ago? Or 10 months ago? It don't matter. Because you've got to check up on yourself. 2 Corinthians 13 and 5, Paul said, examine yourself. Don't examine your brother or your sister. Mind your own business. Examine yourself. And see whether you be in the faith or whether you are a reprobate. Amen? Amen. It's good preaching. I'm getting blessed already. Watch. Watch. Jesus said, what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. Check yourself out. Watch your praying. Watch your worshiping. If you come to church and they're worshiping, and you say, let's just raise our hands and worship the Lord. And you're sitting there. Why don't you mind your own business, Angie? It's none of your business if I raise my hands or not. Oops. See, that's the kind of stuff you need to watch. That's the kind of stuff you need to watch. She's leading you in something that is important to God. Worship. He said, but I don't like that song. Well, try to find a word somewhere there in it that you can say, yes, amen. <laughs> Come on. Attitude is so vitally important for you to watch. Because the spirit is willing. But the flesh is always coming up with some stupid reason why you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't be like this and you can't worship, you can't sing, you can't pray. Watch it. Watch it. Watch what's happening. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever. Watch your praying. He said, well, I go to prayer meeting every Wednesday night. Well, God bless your heart. That's good. There's another six days that you at least, at least need to find some time to seek God in. Watch your praying. Ask yourself, how much time did you spend before God? He said, well, I don't have time. When you can cut out every other extracurricular thing you do, stuff that's outside of your regular needs in life, when you, when, you can, when you can cut all that out and say, I haven't had time for any of that, then maybe, and I'm only just saying maybe, you may have a little credibility at saying, I didn't have time to pray. Watch your praying. Intimacy with God is vital. Because one of these days, whether we like it or not, your heart's going to quit beating and you're done. We just had prayer for, you know, the, the, the party family and my friend Steve a month ago went to be with God. He's not complaining about that now. He's probably just saying, God, make sure Shirley is looked after. 30 days later, his son, probably, I'm guessing, maybe mid or past, mid-40s somewhere, is ushered into the presence of God. And you can fuss about that all you like. You can, you can, you can come up with your rationale and, and, and your, your ideas about this and that and the other thing. But the bottom line is, one of these days, your heart's going to stop beating. And that's what you need to understand when you're watching. Because what's important in life is what turns you towards God, not what turns you towards success in this life. I mean, I, I, last, 
I think it was last Sunday we, we used scripture from Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This book of the law, the word of God, shall not depart from your mouth. But you'll meditate on it day and night that you may make your way successful. Keep God in the middle of it. And if you don't keep God in the middle of it, if you don't watch these things, then you're going to miss something. You're going to lose something. We need to, we need to make sure that we've, we've got the right attitude in our relationships. Humility. Humble yourself there. Stop being such. And this only applies to people that are not here this morning. <laughs> Stop trying to be so cocky. <laughs> Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God so he can lift you up. Amen. Get it? Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God so that he can lift you up. Amen. Stop strutting around like some peacock and thinking that you're the peaches and cream all the time. Give it up. Everybody say, give it up and humble yourself. James 4, 6. We're told to humble ourselves in the presence of God. 1 Peter 5 and 6, same thing. Under yourself, under the mighty hand of God, so he can exalt you in due season. All these scriptures, and there's others. I didn't bother to put the others down because I just want to get the point in there. Humble yourself. Who are you? Who, who am I? When it comes to almighty God, who are we? Man, if we can get to the place where we haven't sinned for 600 days and we pray, we pray like, like half of the day or all day long and just stop time enough to eat and probably not even do that. We're still nothing unless, it's, unless God's grace has got a hold of us and the blood has cleansed us. It has got to be Him and only Him in the forefront or you and I are nobody and nothing and can do nothing. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Watch it. Keep an eye on yourself so that you don't get, you know, I mean, we don't need to have somebody that to pull us down. I mean, come on. Watch it. Everybody say, I'm going to watch it. Stay humble. Because your attitude can destroy every area of your life. Watch your marriage. You know, it's pitiful that even in Christian circles, 50% of marriages are failing. Paul the apostle said, take heed when you think you stand, lest you fall. There ain't nobody that doesn't need the grace of God and the wisdom of God and the word of God to help them make it through. Watch your relationships. Because there will always be challenges that come. Always be temptations that come. There will always be these, these attacks that come. And the intention is to destroy what is good in your life. The intention is to steal anything that's good so that you cannot get it back. And the, dis the destructive course of demonic powers in the world today is, 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 is at a zenith height. It's never been this high before. Destruction in the home, in the school, I mean in the church. Church breaks and, and, and splits, all-time high. Pastors that are losing their, their experience with God and losing their, their, their commitment and just walking away and throwing it down and getting a secular job because they can't handle it anymore. I'm telling you, the challenge is on. And we have to watch Look for situations that indicate something's going wrong and then work on them. Because if you don't work on them, they ain't going to change. Amen? I've been married for 43 years to this woman right here. And if I was set free today, said that it doesn't exist, I'd sign up for another 43 years. God's my judge for that. But there have been times I wanted to send her home to her mother. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. And there's times she, she, she said this to me. I'd like to send you home to my mother too. Not my mother, her mother.
But we stemmed the storms and watched and saw what was happening and crushed it. Ain't nobody here any different this morning. If you think you are, we'll cast that lying spirit out of you. You need to watch these things because there'll be, there'll be setups. Setups. And if there's a problem, it'll get intensified. And if you try to fix it with debate and argument and reason, it'll grow bigger until it overwhelms you and destroys you. Watch your marriage. Watch your friendships. Watch your work relationships. Watch them. Watch your family relationships. I mean, I've known situations where people have walked away from, from, from their, their, their family member and not spoken for like almost 20 years. Come on. Watch it. Watch it. Watch. Jesus knew what he was talking about. Amen. He said, watch. Lest you fall into temptation. He said, the spirit is willing. You see, if you know the Lord... Inside you is the will to do everything perfect. But this thing outside here? <laughs> it's the biggest enemy you got in life. You have an advocate. You have an adversary, the devil, and God has made a way for you to put him in his place. Resist the devil as you submit to God, and he flees from you. True word? But the devil is smart enough to know that if he can work on you and get you against you, come on, get you, if he can get you against you, he, he, he doesn't have to even try because the biggest enemy you got is the one that looks out of the mirror at you every morning. That's your biggest enemy because you can cast out the devil. You can cast out demon spirits. You can walk away from people who are doing you harm and just pretend they're not there. But you cannot cast out your flesh. And the only way you're going to get away from this flesh is leave it behind. Die. You get that? So your attitude is a huge factor here. Because it will determine how you respond to your husband, your wife, your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your son, your daughter, your co-worker, your boss your friends, the people you meet at the grocery store. <laughs> I mean, just go to Dominion when they're selling turkeys for 99 cents a pound. <laughs> I was there too, and I thought, I don't want to be a part of this. I mean, man, some of those people, you're expecting to get one of those frozen turkeys across the head. You cross them the wrong, the wrong way, they kill you for a turkey. And I mean, if, if you bought a 20-pound turkey and you saved 40 cents a pound on it, that's only $8. And you go kill somebody for $8? Go home and come back and pay the extra $8 for the turkey. Have some peace. Amen? <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. But, but, but when you and I are there, we should be the ones to show humility. Don't dig your way in. Don't push your way in. Don't, don't cut people off. But if there's a choice between you getting, I'm just using turkeys because they were on for 99 cents this week and I got one. <laughs> and how I did that, though, I was, I was early. But if, <laughs> if, it comes, if it comes down to the choice, you or, or, or this, this precious housewife that has had a hard morning with her kids and she don't know how to be humble, start with, and she, her patience was gone before she came to the store. If, if, if it comes down to two of you, you know what? Just say, look, you keep this turkey. I'm okay. 
Are you sure? Yes, I am. God bless you. Don't say bless your heart. Just say God bless you. Amen. He said what I say unto you, I say unto all. Watch. Watch. There's a scripture in Ecclesiastes, and I don't know where it is now because I don't do Ecclesiastes very much, although sometimes I go read it. But somebody may be able to find it quick, and if you do, that's good. I'd be happy with that. But it says, watch yourself when you go into the house of the Lord. I don't know if you remember that scripture. Watch your step when you go into the house of the Lord. And I should have had that in my notes, but I don't. But find it. It's there. Trust me. I, I'm using that reference to say this. When you come to church, watch your attitude here too. And I know I alluded to it, alluded to it earlier, but I want to do it again before, as I'm closing. Watch your attitude when it comes to brothers and sisters in the Lord. Watch how you treat people when they, you know, want to shake your hand or hug you. Some, some people may not be ready to have a bad day. They may not have, have, have had as good a morning getting ready for church as you did. You may have had a smooth sailing time getting here. But they might have just made it by the skin of their teeth and they need you to smile at them. Yes, but you don't understand. I got no time for that. I'm not. Humble yourself. And let God flow through. Now, let me, let me flip the coin over so we see the other side. Don't be paranoid and don't be, don't be bound so that you're afraid that you're offending somebody all the time. Jesus was not even like that. But he always kept right attitude. Always kept himself humble, even though he was the king of the universe. Amen? I'd like to encourage you as I close to make your mind up to watch. Watch yourself. I, uh, like Angie said, smart. I've been a father for a long time, but I've been a person for a long time, longer time. And, and I found out that wintertime when snow comes first in the first part of the year, it's, it's the most vulner, vulnerable time people are, whether they're in a car or on their feet. Truth? I've learned, <laughs> be careful. And I don't even care if I look Stupid, I'm going to watch my step. Because I don't want what comes when you hit the ground. The fall doesn't hurt. Hitting the ground is what hurts. Right? So, you go outdoors on a morning when there's been snow or freezing rain or something. You do what? You watch. And you're careful. You take every step with wisdom so that you make it to the car, you make it to the store, you make it to wherever you're going. True? I'm telling you, there's been some snow. Spiritually, there's been some freezing rain. There's been a storm that left, that's left a lot of things and places treacherous. So walk carefully. Watch your step. Whether it's when you come to church Go to work, be among your family, your friends, wherever. Be careful, be alert, be vigilant, stay awake, and watch. Because what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you that you've made it clear that we're blessed if we watch. And we thank you for the blessing of the Lord that comes into our lives as we honor your word, as we submit to your word, as we humble ourselves to your word, so that it's not my way, 
It's not my idea, but it's your ideas, your plan, your purpose, your truth that sets us free and causes us to be free indeed. Forgive us for the times when we missed it and we failed. We've come short. But thank you, Father, that we can get up and go on again because you are faithful, patient, loving. Thank you for that. You are for us. And we can trust you. And I pray that you would help us to be strong and to watch. Knowing that as we watch, even watch for your coming. Looking every day to be ready when our master comes back. Or watching our actions, our words, our reactions every day of our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray that your presence and power would bring the truth and reality of what we've talked about this morning to every heart and that we may make up our minds like never before to be vigilant, to be awake spiritually, watchful on all sides. And Father, I pray that you would help us to take sometimes the, the insight from brothers and sisters who who see what we can't see in our lives and remind us that, hey, you better watch this area. You better watch this thing. Instead of being upset, but Lord, we take it and apply it so that we can improve ourselves and be ready and be in tune. We believe for that. We thank you for it. And we ask in Jesus' name that it be so.